understand the header, the distributed file system based on the cap theorem. According to the cap theorem, definitely it's a partial the partition tolerance. To support the partition tolerance, so the we create the three copies of them and the master and slab node and master keep checking the availability of the each node using the heartbeat and the so on. So it's very good for the partition tolerance. And also available. So we are managing the all the at least the three copies of them and the data are available. So master node keep checking the whenever client requests them, then the is running. So A and P looks good, but the C may be the problem, just like the uh, other the uh, the NoSQL database. But what about the update and delete? Do we have update or delete in the header? So there is no update or delete. That is the reason. It looks like the consistent they are not, data once inserted, it never been changed. Which means consistent looks like. So to pretend the consistency. So they actually that is a reason Hadoop does not allow. Some of the students comment, why is not updatable? Why? Because of the, this reason, the Hadoop actually from the birth of the the Hadoop system, the people thought about the it, why don't we limit that the, it has only create and the retrieve. Okay? It's a append. So that is one of the way to overcome. It looks like the overcome the limitation of the cap theorem, specifically in the C part. Then, so now can we build? This is one of the way, but it's not the solution, right? It hides. So is there any way to beat the cap theorem? So impossible. Actually, it's not possible. It's a theorem. It's not possible. But to pretend, to, to minimize the impact of the limitation. So that is called the it's a new SQL database. Why? Because anyway, it is true. Relational database, online transaction processing, batch job is OK. No SQL database, everybody can use the batch job, but they still need. Some of the Facebook users complain that my post cannot be seen by the others like that. So if we can make the consistent, higher level consistent, this looks like the better. So some of the probably the some of the students selected the database, they said they overcome the cap theorem. It's a consistent as well as available also distributed. But take a look at whether they really solve the problem. Okay? That will be the point when you research your the, uh, NoSQL database you select. So today we are going to see the, any, the approach, any way to make the new SQL. New SQL means from the NoSQL database that are governed by the cap theorem, by overcome in the such a limitation, we can the, go back to the relational database style, high consistent database system. It's a new SQL database. Actually, it's not possible because it's a theorem, but the, we try to minimize the impact. So that is the, uh, the old SQL relational database. Then the, right now, we are talking about the NoSQL, but the, the next we will talk about the new SQL. So we will, I think that maybe next semester when I offer the, this class, a couple of weeks, I'm going to allocate the new SQL database. But the, this semester, uh, May, may not, uh, but the from time to time, the, like the later we will see some of the examples, and also during the, the presentation by the student, we will see some of the examples of the new SQL database, like the, this one. I think the one student select the board TV, but I reject. Is there any student that I approve the board TV? I think I reject because it's uh, already uh, the research and before anyone. So then the, I think one student select the scale DB, then nothing else. So I think the one or two, the new SQL database. Okay, so, so 
from the cap theorem, we cannot give up the partition tolerance, right? Because it's a distributed system. So meaning means that we need to keep the consistency over the availability or availability over the consistency. That's what we discussed. However, we need to think about the characteristic of the data. So characteristic of the data is like the data itself, whether mutable or immutable. Okay? So we have a Hadoop. HDFS, Hadoop, the distributed file system is immutable. By the limit, by the, we can the limit the such a data immutable that we can the, keep the consistency anyway. So like the such a way. So there are several the property to be the cap. So first one is that we discuss make the immutable the data. That is a reason many of that uh, the, uh, we don't need. But we can see the, a lot of data. Uh, like the, even the H base, we can update the data. It's not actually update the data, random update the data. Instead, we keep the additional load. Okay? Think about the data. Actually, update and delete are not much happening. It's not happening a lot really in the database system, any database system. Such an update and delete can be managed separately. So that is the uh, one, the key property. And this is a similar the thing. So, uh, it's a create and the CR, we keep the create only by opening the data. Okay? So our goal is to minimize the complexity, to keep the consistent, even the uh, traditional system to keep the consistency is not that simple. Okay? So we need to schedule, serializable schedule for each operation, then the finally we can have the certain level of consistency. So we are going to be the cap theorem, we are going to focus on the complexity. Let reduce the complexity. So that is the idea of the uh, this one. Also, we can use the Increment algorithm, increment algorithm, algorithm means uh, instead of uh, synchronize all the node, all replica, we can eventually. So one of the example is the eventually consistent to reduce the latency. Okay, then there's actually another way. Can you imagine? I introduced the first class, first, second class. For example, Google. Google probably tried to attack this one. They, the, I mentioned about the disk, the, when you update, synchronize the data, it will take a time. If the query is less than this, then it might be the problem. Why don't we speed up? This one, speed up for the distributed system. So Google actually put the cable under the sea it's for their own server. So in the ocean, like the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, so mostly government put the such a cable under the sea. Then they can be used for the international phone call and the internet and the, you need to get the permission from the mostly government or the, such a, the telecommunication owned by the government because government the investor such a thing. Then Google has a, their own the cable under the sea. Then they try to make the wider bandwidth and faster network. Then looks like this. The, it's a local data center for the different location, like the different intercontinental. Then they even the hardware right? so we make the fast using the faster the network and uh, try to minimize the overhead of the synchronization to give the consistency as well as the um, uh, the available one of the way to beat the cap theorem is a batch computation means the problem is when we query okay it will take a time the longer time it takes the consistency problem if query is quickly done, 
right, the uh, synchronization. Synchronization can be done the quickly. Okay, that will be better. So we are going to use a lot of background processing for the batch job. So we can use the to our goal is to reduce the computation complexity. So a lot of job, the even query, update, and such a synchronization, even though the, there's no query, so who will learn? So for the, even the query, that the, I like to select the data from here, 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 here. Many of the such a query periodically happen. Sometimes, for example, and the, this query is a query. Then the, we can put the, such a the pre-query, pre-query the data output of this one as a batch job in the, the operation database. Then the, if there is any query based on the output of the query, this is based on the batch, then after that batch job, then there is other update. So we will focus on the unit plus the query last 10 minutes, for example. Then we can reduce the query time and the make it available, something like that. So we can use the batch operation to minimize, to be the minimize the complexity, to be the happier. Also, another one is in addition to the batch, for the additional part is to make it real time. Looks like the real time. Faster query. So whenever we query, like the, I think the, if you, Remember, I show you the uh, one of the example of Google the demonstration for the ticketing by the ticketing from the millions of tickets, so from the Asia or Europe and America. So, but it's millions. How can do do, do that? So, not only it looks like the real time query, but behind by the last, you are going to access last one minute. Every minute is a batch job will be running using the map reduce program, for example. Then the your query will be the two part, one is a batch plus last minute the query. Then the, it will show the, that is called the real time. So to address the to minimize such a complexity, we can use the uh, batch and the real time. So batch computation and the real time. For example, one head is uh, for the batch processing, and uh, we can use the, uh, the real time for this one, for the query. So, based on those, these ideas, it's not only, there are many software companies who try to be or to address the, such a problem. So, I believe the reason I'm introducing this one is that maybe this is a good research topic, and also it's an opportunity. If you can address the, like the, Google, we can put the faster hardware. That may be the solution and pretend. Or the background <coughs> processing. Then the, our database model may be different. The database model is uh, the we have a database state, but the employee table has the, the batch table and the real time table. Then the, by combining two tables, we can the, return the query like this. Those are called the new SQL. So nowadays, more and more the database that best support the consistency, stronger consistency. So these are the relational databases, the NoSQL database. Even we have the non-relational the database, but uh, nowadays more and more the new SQL database is coming up. And also, this may be the good opportunity if you are thinking about the such a thing. So, new SQL database actually the defined like the, this, but uh, you don't have too much series, such a definition. So you, so, but it will support, eventually support the ACID. What is the ACID? It's a property of transaction in the relational database. We will discuss more details. So understanding ACID is the, uh, uh, the more important, uh, so very important to understand the other transaction property in NoSQL database. But anyway, so people would like to address the problem of the Capriola, so eventually to pursue the ACID level. Okay. So Breaker is the uh, researcher and professor who is a very 
one of the most important person in database area. So he uh, the, developed the many the IDBMS, the IBMS NoSQL database. Nowadays, the new new SQL database, and uh, he authored the textbook, the database system textbook, and so on. So some of the NoSQL database they give up the SQL interface, but SQL is still easy and uh, it's a human friendly the interface. So keep the SQL ACI ID and but it's a concurrency control without locking. That means address the cap theorem. Okay, the non-locking means available and concurrency. Concurrency means it's uh, available to multiple transaction and with uh, consistency. But it supports a parallel, which means that new SQL database try to address with the cap theorem. There are some requirements, but uh, we already discussed, but uh, this is additional. It's a tradition, so I, when I copy and paste, it's something wrong, okay? There are different locking mechanis mechanisms, so we would, I'm not sure if it's part of the next uh, class. So MVCC is a multi-version uh, concurrency control. Means whenever data is updated, we have different version, different version using the timestamp. Okay. This one is used for the rela traditional relational database, but the new SQL database definitely need to use. But how to use is the problem. And the need more ideas to make that. This is really the beginning of the database. In the database the market and the research is the early stage of the, uh, the area, the new SQL database. One of the examples is the root DB. Why do we use the main memory storage? Speed up, okay? Mm -hmm. To reduce the overhead of the function, not only the hard disk drive, why don't we put the fine physical layer? If you remember the three, the schema architecture in the NC standard in the database, the external view, the conceptual view, internal view. For the internal view, why don't we bring the such an internal view to the memory to speed up? So because of that, you can see nowadays a lot of memory-based database. So memory-based database can be used, or uh, the whole TV used a lot. And it's uh, the no locking, no latching. Latching is also the lock, like the, or the semaphore level the lock. So no locking, the no latching, which means it's available. That is support the available and the so on. Google also the claim that they are developing the new SQL database, which is called the spanner. Okay? It's a distributed, okay, but it supports the basically the ACID. It uses a SQL query language, okay? And the it's a semi-relational data model. It supports most of the relational model, but the slightly different. It controls the version, and behind it has the batch job processing the, to reduce the overhead. I think the later at the end of the probably the November, sometimes November, we will have a time uh, to discuss about the spanner when we talk about the GCP-based, the NoSQL database. Okay. There are a lot of things that we can do, uh, high-level abstraction, and uh, because the, the NoSQL database so far, we have the focus on the get rid of the schema level or the something interface, and the focusing on the speed performance. But uh, still, we need uh, such a high-level abstraction to make them easy to use. So that is the high-level the abstraction. In future, we need. And uh, definitely, read and write in the NoSQL database is limited. So we need to uh, something the improved one, better the batch processing. So these are the opportunities you can think about for your research or the future uh, job or the research. So why don't you think about it? Any questions? So I'm going to stop here. Then the homework. So I didn't explain the details of the Google Spanner. So 
in terms of cat theorem. So anyway, it is true. We cannot the, keep the old three consistency ACID with the part partition tolerance as well as availability. So how Google Spanner keep the ACID strong consistency, which means how the last the Google Spanner the deep what the attack, how to so solve the problem limitation of the cap theorem in the Google Spanner. So why don't you research and uh, bring your the, do not submit to the canvas, why don't you bring, then the, we will have a time to discuss about the, your opinion. So then the, you eventually you will submit in the classroom. So one or two pages is enough, it can be the printed, so you don't have to worry about write down like the other the, uh, classroom homework in my class. You can uh, type, but uh, you don't have to submit to the canvas. Why don't you bring the one or two pages the research? Just if you can not find anything, so just your idea is okay, but uh, we basically we will discuss at the beginning of class how does the Google address the problem of capturing in the uh, Google stand. So why don't you research? There is no clear answer. Okay. If I knew the answer, I put over here a slide. So no, the clear answer. You need to research and uh, uh, study what is the Google Spanner and uh, try to understand. The, they do not say the clearly this is a C problem or the A problem, whatever. But they uh, give the like the, the the Google Spanner has the characteristic of the this the modeling or the this the uh, the feature and the so on. Okay. Any questions? Then the, uh, we will continue the exercise line for the last part of the header. I'm going to upload the uh, new slide as well as the document that I the, collected to the canvas uh, this evening or tomorrow. Okay, you can find that uh, document from the slide, uh, from the canvas. So tomorrow we have engineering 400 curriculum series. So next paper is from the financial university regarding to the bioinformatics. So if you are interested in the bioinformatics, so you can join. Uh, then our 107, room 107, then the 430. You have the Maria and me will prepare the Google-based, GCP-based, the NoSQL database, the practice at the end of the semester. Probably the Google will use the, uh, the scanner as well as the Google Query uh, for the NoSQL database. Later. Later. Like the, I lost my cell phone. Yeah. I used my cell phone. Okay. Let me check. Go ahead. Today we'll see the example of average word length. 
So uh, I'll just let you know what is the task that we need to do. For example, The length, uh, length of each word, uh, we'll be calculating the length of each word, which is 4, 2, 6, 3, 5, 7. So, we'll be writing a program where we'll be using math reduced processing. every word would be the key and this would be the value in math phase. And length of the word would be value. example, let us think uh, we have a uh, repetition of a uh, word which starts with H or I mean, which is the same thing. Uh, something like this. Word would not be the key. The first letter <coughs> of the word will be uh, making the first letter of the word as key and the length of this word as value. So, for example, uh, with uh, word starting with H. We have one word here and starting with H, we have another word. Of the average in the reduced phase. So here, keep again here key with B, the letter and value would be the average length of the word. You know, we have in between mapper and reducer, we have another phase, sort and shuffle. In sort and shuffle phase, whatever the uh, words we'll be having uh, inside the file, that would be sorted in alphabetical order. For example, this is whatever the file we have. I'll show. You.
in the file we have Hadoop and HCL, for example. Sort and shuffle phase, in short and shuffle phase, so we have two words starting with H. This, the length, uh, the, the length of each word, uh, it will be giving us the output of the mapper. This would be the output of the uh, short and simple phase. For example, if we have some words with A, uh, so, uh, words starting with A more than 3, we will be having, for example, 2, 3 or 7 length of, this, uh, this is the length of the word. So, in the alphabetical order, in the short and subtle phase, um, word, uh, sort, sort, uh, sort the words and uh, how, for example, this is uh, length, uh, length of the Hadoop is 6, so we got 6 here and uh, length of the HCL is 3, uh, we got 3 here. This is the output of short and subtle phase which would be the input for reducer phase. The reducer will add this uh, 6 and 3 and calculate the average and we will be writing a program for this. So we have a skeleton code in the workspace. This is the skeleton code for uh, mapper and this is the skeleton code for uh, reducer. <coughs> we need to write uh, the reducer uh, function, function in the reducer. And this is the skeleton code for uh, driver. So let's start with dri uh, driver. So I, have, I see there is already a job object assigned. And I see there is a set jar by class assigned and there is a job name. But I don't see input, uh, which type of input format it is or which type of output format it is and uh, what are the uh, classes for mapper and reducer, I don't see them here. So we need to write them. We do have a skeleton code uh, in workspace, but we need to write it. So whatever the input that I'm giving to the map reduce uh, is uh, file input. Uh, it, that is file format. So I'm that I'm mentioning it as file. I am getting this input from the main, uh, but that is from console.
also mentioned job here. So my, uh, my output also is in file format. I'm giving my output directory also on the console where I'll be getting that from my main function. So whatever the, uh, that I'm getting from console that is set input path and output path that I have given. Now I need to set key values. What are the what type of key values I am giving? Is that text or uh, in, uh, integer or uh, float or double or whatever I am trying to give from the uh, file? I just need to mention that. So here my output is a letter, it that is a key. So this is a text format. So I'll give So I'm calculating average length so that they are double type. So these are my output key and output value classes that I am mentioning prior. So I uh, I didn't mention in my driver class what is my mapper and what is my reducer. So, set mapper class that I'm naming it as letter mapper. My reducer class name is average reducer. So my driver class is ready. So I have, uh, I have, I have job. And I have set my jar class, I have set my inputs, and I have set my outputs, and I have uh, set my what is my mapper and what is my uh, reducer. Now in mapper, so I'm trying to map. of the 
figure. It something looks like if we have something starting with A and its length, if we have some, something starting with C and its length. So this is how something uh, output of the marker looks like. the value that I am getting, I mean, we will be getting in key value format, right? So, I am changing that to a string. I am declaring a string. In a file, there could be more than one line, right? So we need to uh, iterate uh, through each and every line and break that line into words again. So to give some regular expression here where each and every line gets split into words so that I could use the first I mean I could use the word and extract first letter from that to assign as a key, as a key. This is my word for example Hadoop. So I am taking only the first value, and that is first letter. The, the, uh, this, this is a substring method where 
this is the start index and the, this is the end index. So I am taking only the first letter, so that would be that would be my key. And in value, I need to pass uh, length of the word. which would be of type int writable. be the output of mapper and that will be uh, this is input for red user so this is the letter first letter of the word which would be my uh, key and this is the length of the word which would be the value which would be in the uh, in this format this would be the output of the mapper in red user I need to calculate the average length This is output of the short, uh, sort and shuffle phase, which would be input for the reducer, something like this. So we need to iterate this and add them. The name of my uh, value in the red user is values. So I need to iterate through the values, which, are, which can be multiple uh, values.
final result would be in flow, I mean in average. I'm just initializing that. So I need to know how many uh, values are there inside uh, in, in, inside the values. For that I need a counter. We cannot directly access it. We need a method to retrieve the value. So I am incrementing the counter whenever it enters uh, into the loop. That means it has some value. By, by using context, I need to display that into the file. I need to write that into the file. So my key wouldn't change. Whatever the key I got from the uh, so short and subtle phase, that would only be my key. And value, it would be average. my reducer we have created a jar file uh, from console previously from eclipse we could create a jar file we need to right click on the folder in which we have our, our java files And we have an export option. If you click on that, you'll see something like this. And if you expand Java, you can you have the jar file. You could 
browse where you want to save your uh, jar file. saving in the same uh, folder of uh, average word length. And I am naming it as average. I'm able to see my uh, jar file that I have created. Now, if I want to run this program. driver code uh, name is avg word length dot java the name the same name i need to give here but i need to give the package name as well input uh, file would be Shakespeare which is on the HDFS which is on the Hadoop and output file would be I'm just naming it as AVG out
jar file outside the source file, so that's why it's not working as I guess. I just want to play it uh, once again. text file. I just want to uh, try running on that. my small text file this is journey and I didn't mention
just single line that I uh, that I have in my file. I have processed this just now. Let's see the output. I have given test one two three. output would be in part R5. And I don't want to list it and I want to view it. Okay. So, word starting with N and the level of The average length is 2 of that particular uh, words with starting with n. We have with capital N, uh, that is uh, n or no, that is only 2. So the uh, average length is also 2. And with n, small n, uh, n O W that is 3 plus and again I have small n N O T that is 3 plus 3 by 2 which is 3. This is the average length. In the same way with starting with T and starting with I and uh, this is how it gets calculated. Thank you.